Guys, what is up? We are back today. Different video. Actually, this is a first. We're gonna do a pet store review. A quick story time. You guys know I have moved half my time now to California, right? So for the last like 11 years, I've lived in Florida, South Florida. And when I moved to Florida, I started working at Underground Reptiles, right? And Deerfield Beach, uh, up in uh, like Fort Lauderdale-ish area by Parkland. And um, that's my family up there, right? So. Uh, the pastor, Ryan Gitman, um, and the owner of Underground Reptiles, he is also a pastor at Calvary Chapel, Deerfield Beach. So when I came here to Temecula, California, I started buying my rodents and a couple of supplies from the reptile shop. And next door is Calvary Chapel, Temecula. How crazy is that? So me, as a, I always take the breadcrumbs and the signs if I'm going the right path in life, that is my sign right there. And this is where I shop here in California. Let's go do a review. We're gonna go through and see all their animals, how healthy they look, if the water bowls are clean, if the, all the stuff on the shelf is front face. I come from a pet store, all right? My first job was at a pet store. So I'm real meticulous about how clean these pet stores are. If I'm gonna shop there and spend my hard earned money, let's go check them out. <laughs> shop in Temecula. Let's go check them out. So what I usually do when I first come into a pet store, I do the first thing. That smells good in here. It does smell good. It actually really smells good. Um, even though I do love the pet store smell, for me it's like nostalgic, but when you come into a pet store and it actually smells good, that means everybody's actually working hard. There's no lazy people here. Um, first we're going to start off just checking out the supplies. I mean, Reptifarders, monsoons, repticulars, litter drippers. I mean, all the basic artificial plants, the vines, background for the cages. Look at these, snake tongs. If you're working with venomous snakes or feeding some animals and you don't want to get bit or you don't want to keep your hands safe, look at this. This is a high class tongue right there. I like that. But yeah, I mean, they got palladium, paludarium eater. I don't even, paludarium? Palladium. Palladium. That's just a Boldarium. weird. Boldarium. Boldarium. <laughs> Small Dan. What's up, Dan? <laughs> uh, they got freaking thermostats, Terra pumps. I mean, you yeah. name it. All the light bulbs in order. Yeah. Lights, red ones, blue ones. The, one the, the light bulb size holders. And I, I'm pretty sure you guys have all your reptile cubes out there. I like to buy the big, huge sun solar glows. And sometimes they burn out and bust out because I'm putting them in too, too small of a, a wattage that can actually hold it but they have every size you need. Um, they got more snake hooks, freaking books. Now, this is very key. If you're a little kid coming in a reptile store and you got all this stuff, they got little small dinosaur bones and shark teeth for sale. Stuff like that is what makes a kid come back, all right? Especially a kid like me going to pet stores. Look at these. They have their own special freaking trading cards, okay? Now, Nobody's looking, but we're going to open them up and see what they got. All right. See what's special up in here, huh? Predators trading cards. Not bad. That's sick. What's up? What's up, brother? This is the owner right here. Now, another cool thing is his name is Mike, and my name's Mike. What's up? How you doing, brother? Good to see you, dude. I, uh, I, I just bought a pack of cards. So. <laughs> Don't even trip, bro. Look at this. Goliath breeding tarantula. Scientific name, conservation status, habitat, diet reproduction, size, lifespan, literally all the things you guys need to know. Number 22, and a fun fact down there. Bird poop tree frogs, red eye crocodile skinks, frilled dragons, sunbeam snakes. I mean, this is awesome for you guys to come inside of here as a kid and want to learn about animals. You get a pack of trading cards, and you can collect them all. That is genius for learning. Also got stickers, you want to sticker your notebook up, I always buy stickers for my laptop. I just never lost that inner kid. So I'm always grabbing little tips and tricks and geckos and tarantulas for, you know, my stuff at home. Boom. Anybody want to take a wild guess what this is? Fruit flies. 
you guessed it, <laughs> something else you were wrong, all right? This is where they actually cultivate fruit flies inside here. Um, they can't fly yet, so uh, they usually feed these to like um, small dart frogs and small chameleons that are just little, little tiny hatchlings, stuff like that. So it's cool to always have different feeders from fruit flies to hornworms, to mealworms, superworms, rats, roaches, whatever you guys pet store has, you gotta make sure they have everything you need. Here, they have a little refrigerator over here, but all of the above. We'll get to that later though. Look at these, bikini bottom. <laughs> all your reptile hides, you hide, your animals need a space to hide to feel safe and comfortable. So when you guys are shopping for your new pets or getting new things, you wanna make sure you got everything from branches, places for them to hide, big enough water bowls, different lighting systems, UVA, UVB. Uh, some animals like little small art carpets. I'm not really a carpet guy, but you know, each his own. Look, water bowls, all sizes. Cool. Little skulls, you wanna decorate your habitat. Don't be afraid to decorate. Uh, I know some animals can have a little bit clutter. You wanna make sure you have enough space. You're gonna put like crocodile skulls and ramps and artificial plants, but make sure they have space to stretch out be an animal. You don't want to have too cluttered. You don't have no space to move, you know? Let's go. Misting systems, little sprayers, food. Rapashi is awesome for geckos. Rachidaphilus geckos, crested geckos, leopard geckos. I mean, you name it. They have bitter dragon rapashi. They have even red tortoise rapashi, regular turtle rapashi, blue tongue skink. It's just a, whole, a wide variety of different things. Um, axolotl pellets, aquatic frogs, shrimp, I mean, you name it. I do actually buy a few of these uh, items down here for my uh, aquatic sliders. So I pop a couple pieces of shrimp in there, some uh, uh, tetra turtle pellets, oh, this waterfall systems, harnesses. I mean, this place is, is, is packed, okay? This is a good place to shop because they have everything you could possibly think of and whatever you need. Um, if you guys don't want to get all the stuff that you don't need, these cool, uh, Zoomed Rep to Habitat kits. They have like 40 gallon tank, they have the light bulb, they have almost everything you guys need inside there from little perches and little hangers and artificial plants or pieces of wood. That's a good starter setup like a ball python or a bearded dragon or a leopard gecko, uh, you name it. So, um, and it's cool because they have this right below. It's all the animals that can actually fit in these habitats, you know, smart thinking. We'll get into the animals after we do the supplies, okay? So. Follow me. More hides. Here's wood. Now, Mike has supplied me with tons of wood. I came in here, and uh, California gets a lot of good pieces of wood. Not saying Florida doesn't, um, but usually we go to the beach up in like West Palm Beach, and we go out early in the morning. And sometimes just big driftwood to wash up, wash up on the beach. Throw in the back of the truck. We bleach it, power wash it. Throw that sucker in our cage, bro. It's sick. But we have all these different options for small animals. Cork bark. This is also a great hiding mechanism. Two of my Boltons pythons um, have big, huge pieces of cork bark and they go inside there and sleep and they come out at night and it's awesome, man. You know, it gives them, they can, I can say you leave your lights on, right? You don't turn your lights off. I suggest everybody do, you know, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, so on and so forth. But if you have a, a habitat where you say you don't turn your lights off, they can go inside here and get full darkness, go to sleep. That's good for monitors, anything that's uh, semi-arboreal or fully arboreal. So, but that's also where the hides come in. If the animal wants to go away and hide, it can sleep inside of its hide. So, screen habitats, LED lights, good for chameleons, some geckos, incubators. If you guys are having animals or you're pairing up animals, some animals have parthenogenesis clutches. So, you may have an animal one day just pops off some eggs, and you're like, "Oh my god, I never had a male with it. What's going on?" You have an incubator. You can hatch those bad boys out. Boom. So, last but not least, we're gonna get into the plants. The plants, oh, the plants are so nice. Uh, not many reptile stores carry live plants. These guys do. I always see this thing stocked up. I don't even know what this is, but it's like grass in a cup. <laughs> Moss, oh, I like it. Um, it probably would be good for uh, like dog frog set up or like live vivariums and stuff like that. Uh, but that is very, very intricate care and uh, tedious work. I don't have the time for that yet. One day though. Look at all this, man. All these cool freaking plants. I love it. I love the fauna and the flora of all the world. <laughs> all right, so moving on. Sand, sphagnum moss, 
rare earth particles. Some people have uh, pebbles and leaves and sand and some uh, little bio eco earthen balls that have waterfalls. And I'm not a fan of, of uh, chips, but maybe you guys like chips. This is my favorite number one go to dite. The best dirt in the world, I feel, is this jungle mix. Bro, I have spent a fortune getting this in all of my habitats. Um, it kind of, and and, uh, and the pet stores, they, sm they sell these small bricks. I actually bought like 15 bags of these today at Home Depot. Um, but in Florida, I used to get this big, huge, like, I mean, it had to be like four foot tall, three foot wide, big brick of sphagnum moss. It would last me a whole year. I'd mix that sphagnum moss the jungle mix the humidity is just right perfect sheds you can clean the poop and it's not like soaking in and getting all nasty that's good uh, really good stuff. that's my number one go-to um number two i would also use rep the bark or uh some of these big huge bricks you can just throw all right there right here there was some water expands it's actually really good as well too but number one jungle mix now we're going to get into the animals so guys, before we get into what's for sale, one of the coolest things that reptile stores have are the reptile employees that work here, all right? They have some of the sickest animals in their collection. I swear to you, I've had a lot of guys I work with back in Florida, and they don't have Instagram, they don't have big breeding projects, they have little small pockets of stuff they love, but the animals are flawless. So I asked a couple of the guys, bring in some of their favorite pets they have at home and some of these animals from the pictures I've seen I'm like bro you got to bring that in next time and do a quick show and tell oh my so here's God. the big guy bro look at that here's the big guy he's got an eight me <laughs> look at this guys one of two pro probably three as you want to count the Komodo but uh venomous animals on the planet the venomous lizard these are beaded lizards. There's also Gila monsters as well too. Um, but this guy, look, a little baby who wants to bite. That thing will smoke you, send you to the hospital. It'll probably make you feel sick. I don't think it'll kill you, depending on your immune system. But if you guys take a look at those claws, oh my goodness, bro. He looks like Edward Scissorhands. Look at that thing. Ah, oh, I love it. Look at the striping on him. He is cute. He's ready to rip. Now they have these glands that just seep out you know and just they chew on you and you get bit oh you're gonna be sick man uh one of my buddies got bit his name was zach and that thing clamped on his finger and it stayed on for like 10 minutes oh bro he turned pink and white and blue and red. He, he turned almost every color in the rainbow in a matter of an hour first throwing up and puking not himself it was terrible he felt like crap for like two weeks <laughs> he made it but it was terrible look at this cute little fella man Oh, I've got to get one of these. Look, he wants to. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking really, uh, he might like, get a hand swollen or something like that, but you don't want to get bit by that little sucker. All right, so going from level one to 100 real quick. <laughs> Zip up. Oh, <laughs> gosh, dude. He's much bigger than I thought he was. Hi, buddy. Hello. Hi. Can I tell someone to talk to you? Yeah. Are you a good boy? Yeah, I think you're a good boy. Dude, look at this animal, bro. Beaded lizard. Look at the scales. That's really good for name, beaded. You know, I got the little beady scales over there. They got that tongue, bro. He looks sick. A sick creature, bro. That is an awesome animal. Let's pick him up. Definitely venomous. You don't want to get smoked by this thing, but uh, I think he'll be a, a good boy today. Look at that, look at that. He is good looking. Now, when you see a lizard shedding in big full pieces like this, you know what that means? He's healthy, okay? You gotta be careful with these guys because they'll probably turn around and whack him, but I'm gonna be quicker than that. Boy. Oi, buddy. Hello. He's not a jerk. He's usually not as chill. <laughs> Some of those spots like by his legs, he might get a little jumpy because it tickles him a little. Look at that. Man, this guy is healthy. Look at that. Probably a good little soaking would do him some good. Uh, these little off pieces, we're just peeling it right off. 
So um, I've worked with Beatus and Gila Monsters um, in, uh, in Florida for some years. So uh, I'm pretty familiar with this species. Um, but again, you do not want to get bit by this sucker. It's, a, it's not a fun bite. Sick animal. Look at that tongue going. Sick animal. Oh, it feels like big, thick pieces of sandpaper. Uh, bro, it's sick, dude. An animal. An animal. Look at that. Look at the claws. See how the baby has those long claws? That he gets those long claws from Papa. There's no, uh, there's no uh, man manicure and pedicure going on over here. Hey, you cut it out there, fella. It's good to hold these guys like this because they're not going to really bite down. But you don't want to push it by, you know, you can grab them by the back up there, but you got to be careful. Look at them. Sick animal, bro. Oh. Now these guys eat like uh, in captivity. Actually, feed these guys eggs, egg yolk. Hey, hey, all right, all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> I'm actually gonna move this. Hey, go over there. Go ahead. Yeah. Probably get a better view, a better view from up here. Look at this guy. He is a animal, bro. A sick animal. Hi, buddy. Oh, cut it. You're okay. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's so cute. Let's see if I can get that shut off his head. Boom. That's it. Look at that, man. You guys are picking up the depth of those scales. They're so, it's like little mountain ridges up there. All along. It is sick. Little ears on the side over there. That tongue. Now, you see his cheeks right here. That's where all his juices are going to be flowing. He's going to bite down. Oof. That's all muscle. You don't want none of that, all right? Look at him. He's cute, though. He's a cute little fella. Mike, what are these guys mainly eating all the time? In so, we, so, so we feed them like a variety of quail, rodents, eggs, scrambled eggs, but mostly mostly rodents, chickens, quail, eggs. They, uh, they, they, they have a, we kind of try to keep a variety going. He particularly likes quail. He's he's a he's a quail fiend. Some animals <laughs> just go off of that quail. Yeah, huh? he he digs quail. Luckily, we got a good local source for him, so we keep him fed really well. So where is it from so, exactly? What's so, the locale? How many different variations of these guys are so there? So there's a lot. So they so they range all the way down past Guatemala. So in Guatemala, you got the Charles Bogard eye, and then the farther you come north, you have the exasperatum hortum hortum. And then you have exasperate them or uh, horde them, exasperate them, which is these guys. And then you have horde them, horde them, which is oh, look at look at these pits. Mm -hmm. So horde them, horde them are the darker color, more southern. Most these are the most northern ranging uh, subspecies of beetle. So these guys are horde them, exasperate them, and they come all the way up into central Mexico. This is a sick animal. Oh yeah, they're they're awesome. sick animal. Look at like look at this guys. The yellow blotches with the black in between. The, the scales, the osteoderms is what they call that up there. <laughs> Sick, bro. It is an animal that you want to see up close and personal. Cameras, photos, does no justice for this animal. Mike, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, man. I, no I problem. might have to Anytime. bring this guy home with me. Because of my beat it lizard projects. All right. All right, buddy. We're going to put you back in your little box, all right? Come on, sweetheart. You're gonna go back home to your big habitat. He's a good kid, man. See you later, buddy. All right, guys. So he's more flight than biting. One of the sickest colubrids on the planet. One of the biggest colubrids on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, the king rat snake. Ooh, wait, look at this animal. Goodness gracious. Talk about another aspect of scaling. Look at that, look at those scales on there. Those keeled scales, ridiculous. Look at one thing I love about snakes the most, they can have that blotching, that speckles that go from the top and then they can hit the middle of the body and fade away to straight one color. Now this thing could chew on me easily, but he's being a good boy today. I can I can tell he's a good one. But um, usually these animals come out flying and smoking. But this is 
Look at that. That's an animal. Look at the thickness on it. One of the top critters in this environment. And a snake in the wild, when it's nice and hot, you ain't catching them. You ain't catching them. You gotta be like some type of Ricky Mac type of crazy to catch something like this, all right? Look at this animal, dog. I think they only have one one really natural predator in the wild, right? So then they're, they're natural predators, the king cobra. So that's what king cobras eat in the wild is these guys. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. That's one of their that's one of the only, that's the only thing that this guy's afraid of, probably. <laughs> yeah, king cobras. Yeah, that's king about it. Bat scared of king cobras. You know? Oh man, what an animal! Look at that snake. Look at it. Appreciate it. Observe it. Obsess over it. If you want, you can even kiss it. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I'll see you later, dude. Oh, he's what pretty a freaking pet to have at home. The king rat, ladies and gentlemen. You stay there. Don't you move, all right? Guys, the albina version of the king rat. This one apparently is a smoke show. Look at this. Probably turn around and whack you, but it's okay. I don't see him puffing up. Well, look, there he goes, there he goes. Look at that. Look at that performance. Look at this snake, guys. Oh, there you go. There you go. You show him who's big and bad. You are the king. You are the king rat snake. So show him what you got. Hey, you okay, buddy? Look at that thing. Puffing that neck up. I love when colubrids pop up, man. Look at that. Look at this creature. Hey. Sick animal. Now some snakes are crazy just because they're scared. Not because they want to bite you. They're just defensive. That's all they know. We're big, huge creatures. And uh, sometimes they have no idea what we're doing or why we're doing it. They can't understand it. And it's not their it's not their responsibility to understand that they're in captivity, you know. No, I'm not against people having pet animals, pet snakes. I have snakes on my own, you know. But it's up to you to understand why they do what they do, and you can't take it personal. It's just their business to protect themselves. They gotta stay alive out there in the wild, out there in the jungle. These things get eaten by other snakes. They get hunted by people. Birds attack them. All types of things. They can swim across the river, get eaten by a fish, or snatched up by a crocodile. But it could be small and get smoked by all the other animals around them. So they have to have a natural defense to be on defense. Because uh, once they reach a certain size, they mainly stay on offense. So oh, look at this animal, bro. It is sick. Look at that puffing of the neck. Look at that. Get him. Bite him. Kill him who's boss. Get that camera. He's looking right at him, I'm gonna smoke you. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna turn around by me, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm a sick animal, dude. Look at that animal, guys. The king rat, ladies and gentlemen. The albino. Too positive, huh? Sick animal, bro. What a creature. You like this one? You wanna see it? Come here. If mom says you're still okay. So this guy, he's a little not nice today, so we gotta make sure we're keeping our space. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, this is your king rat. We're gonna put him up. He's obviously wants to smoke you. And uh, I don't want him to keep jumping out, striking him, stressing him out. He's probably had a nice little car right over here. But, uh, dude, what a stance, what a position, what a definition of a snake. All right. All right. Your Nazi guy is. He's big. He's got to go on the floor. Let's go on the floor. With this snake, <laughs> yeah, take it on the floor, bro. Jeez, bro. She's big. No, I never. Oof. Goodness gracious, that snakes. You want to smell that? <laughs> guys ready for this one this is a specimen this is one of mike's pets this is even off the bag the biggest false water cobra i have ever seen 
I didn't even know they got this big. Look at this guy. Now, just like a true cobra, dude, he's massive, Mike. Oh my God. He got some size, man. Let's see if they got that cobra hood. Now, it's not long, it's long and flat like a cobra, but it's not like, cause it have that like Indian cobra hood. Look at this animal, bro. What a creature. Thick animal. I mean, like I said, guys, the people that work at the pet stores around the United States, around the world, they're gonna be your giant, giant influencers with giant, huge collections, but what they have is long-term captive animals that are the epitome of their species. Specimens, bro. Look at this animal. Look how thick it is. I have never in my almost 30 years of life seen a false water cobra this big. I've been to hundreds of reptile shows. I've surfed the web. I've looked online. Look at that hood. It's flattening out. Look at that. Still have rear fangs, okay? Still a mildly venomous snake. Not gonna kill you, depending on your immune system, but whew, you don't want this thing smoking and hanging off you. Yeah. You would not be happy, especially at this size. They would clamp on you and let you have it. <laughs> Bro, I mean, I don't know how long, but I'd say easily like seven foot, eight foot. That's a big one. That is a big one. There's nothing small about this snake. Oh, guys, baby version, adult version. Look at that hood. Tiny little, little, little baby fella. Hood, little baby hood. Oh, the little baby hood. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the false water cobra. I know that king rat and that beaded lizard was dope, but this hands down is the best animal I've seen in a long time. Makes me really happy to see the true giants of the animal kingdom in their own right form, the false water cobra. This is a male one of those. So this is kind of like the average size of an adult male. They're sexually dimorphic in size and the females are quite a bit bigger. Quite? Which, yeah. So you gotta, you gotta watch out because sometimes the females will try to much down on a male from time to time. I can see that. Yeah, they're, they're no, they're no, she's no joke. That's a snack. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So you guys seen all the employees' favorite pets. Bring your pet to work day. Now we're gonna go. What's for sale? Let's check it out. First up, one of my favorite animals. I don't. I, I just keep always saying that because they're all my favorites. But the Guru Line Water Monitor. Big, huge oscillation on the back. The big spots. Look at that little cute fella. That thing is sick. Oh, I love how they got sometimes a little banding around the nose. Another sleeper of a starter lizard, Melanistic Lacerda. Talk about a mini Komodo dragon. Look at that thing, always on the hunt. He is looking for crickets. They're actually pretty social little animals. They're little gangsters. I wish we guys, these guys got huge, but even though they're small, they are mighty. And they're pretty, pretty, pretty expensive, 200 bucks a pop. No joke. Feeder dragons, typical, call them bread and butter. Um, you got your Madagascan day geckos, freaking nuts. Northern blue tongue skinks, toke geckos, leopard geckos. We'll pull a couple of them out, but uh, man, this place is nice. Look, boas. I think Mike specializes in breeding boas. And uh, this is probably some of all of his offspring over here. Uh, black pine snake. Man, these are sick. Look at this habitat setup. I'm not sure what's inside of here, if anything, but this is good for like a King Gorum monitor or even a beer dragon, different levels. They can go on there and bask, nice high temperature, freaking thermostat so you can set it to 97, 98, drop it however you want to drop it. They got a cool spot down there. Baby Salcado tortoises, rhino iguanas, red foot tortoises, more rhinos. Guys, you guys know I'm a sucker for cyclora. I have so many. Uh, Cyclora out in Florida, I still gotta bring over to California. I just gotta set up my reptile house first. Um, uh, white throat monitors. I mean, bro, they have tons of varanus here. Green tree pythons, it's biac. Sick. Now, you guys know these guys go through that that uh, that color change as their babies. They call them neonates. I think this is 
probably screwed in there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna de-perch them. But I'll take them out so you guys can see. Talk about our animal. Look at that. Your Biak green tree python. This is the most common green tree python. Oh, look at that. Look at oh, my guy. Brought out the, brought out the homie. <laughs> this is Poseidon the water monitor. Where you going, bro? What's up? Where you going, buddy? So uh, this this is our store mascot. This is Poseidon. He's the he's just the he's just the homie, just hanging out. He's like a big baby. Guys, your Biak green tree python, your most common green tree python, your most common chondro. They go uh, green. Yeah. At the end, but they start at yellow and they start at like crimson red. Okay, and they lose that uh, that yellow as they get older, and that green kind of punches through. Now, biaks have a whole lot of white spots going down the dorsal, whereas like a like a Jayapura has like a blue streak or a my, uh, or mysore, or they have a Cyclops Mountain Green Tree Python, which are like blue. They have all types. They go around those tree branches like that. They're mainly arboreal snakes. Um, when they're tiny little babies. They're gonna be hanging out and uh, around the leaves, around the ground, pretty low. And they use that colors to blend in with the flowers around them. And if you look real close, that tail is basically used as a lure. So it's always discolored, even as a baby. And they wiggle that tail, hummingbirds and little small animals are coming through and thinking they're gonna eat like a worm or something. And boom, this green tree pipe down snatches them up. They have actually probably about the second longest uh, teeth in the non-venomous family, uh, mainly because they like to eat birds and other animals that just hang out. Um, usually they're gonna be, be uh, moving around at night and uh, you'll catch them perched up all in that nice coil during the day. Um, if you look, they have these very profound called pit organs. Um, that's how they see like basically infrared. And uh, they got those big huge nostrils on the front. Their pupils are real good. They're like looking around they got those muscles on top of their head. Good strikers, accurate strikers. You probably could bite me from right there. Um, and, uh, but nonetheless, one of the sickest snakes on the planet. All right, buddy. All right, guys, right below the green tree python, let's check out something that also goes through a major color change when they're babies. Come here, you little bugger. Gotcha now. Look at this. This is a tegu. If you guys saw our last episode, we found a dead tegu in the street. But look at that little green head. Why? They need to blend in with the leaves, the foliage around them. They've got to survive. Almost all tegus are born with that little green head and they lose it. And then they become big, strong adults big jowls, eating whatever they want. Cute little kid, man. Uh, Tegu's hatch about like uh, 30 eggs at a time. And um, boom, these little small things pop out. They're lightning fast. They sleep under like little logs and decaying trees that have fallen down. And uh, yeah, go ahead free buddy, all right, look at them. Lightning fast. Animal from Australia or Papua. An animal from South America. Let's keep moving. The Sorong green tree python. Look at this guy. I don't know if I can pull his full perch out, but we can uh, we can turn him so you guys can see him. I'm not gonna fully pull him out. Look at this animal, guys. Sick. Remember I told you about that blue dorsal stripe? Look at that blue. It's almost no white at all. Now this thing has went through that full color pattern change. And uh, look at it. I got the blue on the head. Blew around all the way over there. I'm not sure if you guys are picking that up, but that is a sick animal. And like I said, you got the Cyclops green tree pythons, you got the Jayaparas, and they also have that crazy powder blue going down that stripe, that dorsal. So put this guy back. And you guys know I love laces. Look at this. This is a variable lace monitor. But the cool thing about this one that I noticed, he has the variable pattern, but got almost like a bell's face tail sick huh one of the uh, top predators out in australia from the scrub python and the parentine the lace monitor does not fall too far from the top of the food chain and this one is a good disposition it's fat it's healthy 
this is a good pet to have yeah, right here. Now you got your, uh, you got your uh, lace monitor, and you have also a baby quince monitor right there. Sick animal. They also call them Molinas monitors. This guy is nuts, bro. Semi arboreal can climb high up in trees, can swim out, cross rivers, eat up eggs, eat other snakes, eat other lizards, eat turtles. You name it, they're gonna do it. They're gonna raid your freaking house. Ricky Mac told me one day he was cooking out on the grill, lace monitors running off and snatching the burgers off the plate. <laughs> Sick. They got freaking balls, son. Oh uh, yeah, man. Look at this guy. Sick animal. I absolutely love it. Oof. Gotta get me a variable soon. She's perfect, bro. All right, guys, we got some guests over here, so we gotta kind of keep it moving. Male chameleons, all types of tarantulas. Now, thing, I'm not gonna start pulling out spiders, but you guys get the get the point. This is their arachnid section, the invertebrate section. All right, what else they got over here? Um, I don't know. What's in here? Oh, what's that? Isopods. <laughs> Freaking cool. Yeah. Young Goliath bird eater. Pink foot Goliath bird eater. Mexican red knee. Blue goody. Lots of cool stuff. Let's keep going. Mm, boa constrictors. Brill dragons. Bro. Mangrove snakes. Rhino iguanas. Freaking Lewis Eye hybrids. Varanus prusinus. A green tree model. Look at that little cute kid right there. That is a sick animal. A little young guy. A little young raptor, and it's gonna be in its prime soon. Those also come in black. They come in yellow. They come in blue. Freaking sick. That's a coming green. You can say the lace monitor, black roughneck monitors. Armadillo lizards. Oh, they got everything in here. Herman's tortoises, retics, more rhino iguanas. Tyrannus. Little tigers. A Nile monitor. Now, he says not social. So, uh, I'm not going to go against the grain. I kind of believe it. There's an old funny, uh, there's memes now, but the old school guys used to say, uh, the devil one day asked God to make an animal, have his own pet, and he made the Nile monitor. That's the running joke from back in the day. I don't believe they're that mean. I just think they have a bit of a toot. They're living underground in Africa. African rock pythons, lions, hippopotamus, Nile crocodile. I mean, you can keep going, okay? I'd have an attitude too if I'm getting killed left and right. Oh, King rat snake, a little smaller one. Nice retake down there. False water cobra. But what we're gonna spend a little bit of time on before we leave is the last one, these dart frogs. So sick. Some of my favorite animals that live beneath the leaf litter. Uh, little amphibious creatures. Uh, we got mm, Can't really see. I'm not gonna start pulling them out, but we'll see the ones that are already out. And you can also make cool vivariums. You guys see the different layers right here, right? Boom, 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 boom. So sick. Oh, these are Rodis dart frogs. This little guy back there, they're tiny, man. Oh, okay, blue Azurius right here. Let's see, we can open this without him flying out. Oh, there he goes. Look, 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 guys, look at that. Look at that. That is sick, huh? Look at the color on that thing, man. Freaking nuts. Now you really don't want to hold these guys too much. They're real fragile. They can even uh, get so stretched out they freaking seize up and they'll pass out right in your hand. You don't want to do that. Ooh, citronella dart frogs. Much bigger. I think they may be the biggest dart frogs uh, in, in, in that family. They're gone. Like buried back in there. Oh, there you go, they're out. It's freaking out. <laughs> There's one right here in the corner. You guys see him down there? Boom. Of course we can appreciate the frog, but please take a moment, guys. Back up a second. 
and look at this habitat. You got the live moss, you got the live plants, you got the leaf litter. Look at that, you got different layers happening down there. That's what keepers are all about. That's what coming to a pet store and learning about an animal, how to keep it, you see how they're kept. Sick, bro. Good job, Mike. Thanks, man. Freaking veteran of the game. Dendro babies. Freaking bumblebees. Oh, dude, you got blue and black and you got everything over here, bro. Tomato frogs. Sick. All right, guys. As we're closing out this freaking awesome show, you have your bamboo rat face. Look at these. Perfect time for fall and Halloween coming up. This is the jack o' lantern of snakes. Outside of the ball pythons, I actually have pumpkin faces on them. This right here is an animal. Your bamboo rat snake. Sick, huh? That double dorsal stripe going down the back, black with the orange all the way around the white belly. That is an animal right there. Look at that. Sick. Who wants to bite my finger? I bet you. Who wants to bite? Do it. Go, Chico, Chico. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and you want to do a one? -hand? All right, guys. That concludes today's pet shop review. Comment down below. What are you going to give? One out of ten. I'm giving them a ten. I would say 9.7 because there's no mammals here, but that's Florida. Florida and California are two different places. In Florida, you can't sell beetle lizards. <laughs> so that's why they got that extra point three, you know? So sick spot very clean smells good everything's nice and neat and organized and as you guys can tell they keep their animals at home the best let alone the animals in the store you guys seen the biggest beetles i've ever seen and also that false water cobra and king rat snake <laughs> guys if you're ever in california come to the reptile shop in temecula and tell them tarzan sent you i love you guys peace say bye to everybody over there bye everybody <laughs> bye guys good looking out